I'm so glad you decided to come back or if you're new, welcome. I'm Megan and this is my channel, Glue Guns and Roses, where I'm all about budget-friendly home decor. Today I have some super easy DIY farmhouse spring decorations to share with you. So let's just go ahead and get started. But before I forget, I did finally start an Instagram account. I'm gonna share the link down below. I'm gonna say, please forgive me, I'm new to Instagram. I don't quite understand it yet. I have like two posts, more to come soon. So don't judge me. All right, now let's get started. For my first DIY, I just used a leftover cardboard or box to trace out a bunny, cut that out. I actually used a old box. I just wanted something about as thick as poster board and this was free. So I cut my first bunny out and used that as a template for my next two bunnies, meaning I have three bunnies in total, all of them cut out. Using hot glue, I attach some moss to all three of my bunnies. I know a lot of people use like silicone spatulas or whatever to apply moss or hold down the hot glue. I like using a fork. It works well, whatever, whatever floats your boat. I just don't like getting burned. I don't think anybody does, so. And then you'll have a little bit hanging over when you're done, no big deal, just snip it right off. Very easy to give the shape of the bunny back. So, so far it looks like this, looking pretty cute. And then I decided I wanted to give Peter Rabbit a cotton tail. So I'm literally using one ball of cotton, making it into three little balls. And this is going to be the little fluffy tail, a little bit of hot glue, and I just add it to my rabbit. And here's what it looks like so far, pretty cute to me. And then I went to the thrift store a long time ago and I got this wood frame. I want mine to be wood. If you want the same shape, they have a similar size or shape, whatever, at Dollar Tree, only for a dollar. I just want it wood. This is the Walmart decorative chicken wire. It is next to the burlap in the wreath floral section. This stuff cuts really easily and you get like two feet by four feet, I think. Either way, I'm using hot glue to attach it to the back of my frame. You can use a staple gun. I couldn't find mine. And after that dries or after you're finished stapling it, you want to bend the chicken wire back so the pointy side is not pointing towards you. If you prick yourself with this stuff, it really does hurt, believe me. So either way, hot glue, staple gun, you're gonna have to bend it back. I like to go back through and add an extra layer of protection with some hot glue over the prickly side. Then I'm just taking some scotch tape or off-brand scotch tape, whatever, and that's how I'm gonna attach my bunnies to the chicken wire. I want this to be able to come off easily so I can reuse it throughout the season. An afterthought was I wanted this to have a distressed white look, so I'm just using chalk paint and dry brushing all over the frame. This would have been a lot easier to do before I added the chicken wire or bunnies, but it was an afterthought, so it is what it is. I'm gonna go back with a light brown that's in between the white and the dark stain the wood was and just kind of dust it. I like using three different colors when I distress for more dimension. So totally optional. Once again, this is all preference for me. And then to hang the frame, I'm just using some hot glue and rope. And then here it is. I think this is totally adorable. I have seen the moss bunnies all over Pinterest for years and I love the way that they look on the chicken wire. I was actually inspired by a Dollar Tree welcome sign that had little bunnies like this. For my next DIY, I'm just using a grapevine wreath from the Dollar Tree. This is the larger size. And then these are, lavender. this one is a lavender pick from Walmart. It's 97 cents. This is only one. The only thing is, that it has like powder on it. It looks like I fried chicken in my craft room, but that's a lot of lavender for only $1. Same thing, a lamb's ear for only 97 cents. So two lavenders, one lamb's ear. The lamb's ear is a little dusty too, but not as bad as a lavender. And I'm just gonna go through and stick the picks in all the way around the wreath. I didn't hot glue the lavender because it wasn't necessary. And then once I got them all in, I kind of adjusted them and fluffed them how I wanted them. And then I went back and added the lamb's ear leaves. And I just did this like as random as I could, you know, just to give the wreath some balance. An afterthought or what I decided to do is use these, I think they were daisies. It's from the Dollar Tree. I've had them for a while. And I just went through and stuck them in randomly as well. 
And I did go back through and hot glue like the leaves and then the little white flowers or any area that needed to be hold down. And then here it is. I know I say this about every single wreath. If you've watched my channel, you know I'm obsessed with wreaths, but I swear this is the most beautiful wreath and it screams spring to me. I'm totally digging it. I'm in love with it. I think I need to broaden my vocabulary because I say that about everything. All right, lastly, so originally I thought I would need three lavender pieces and two lamb's ear for the wreath, but that wasn't the case. This little jar is from the Dollar Tree. I painted it white a long time ago. So with my leftover lamb's ear and lavender, because I originally bought three lavender, two lamb's ear, I'm just gonna put it in this little vase, rearrange it how I want it. And I'm just really loving the way that these two floral picks look together. It just, it screams spring. Like I said, I need to broaden my vocabulary, but I really do. I think this is beautiful. I'm not quite sure where I'm gonna put it. I'm thinking our bedroom. I don't know, this would go great anywhere. So go to your Walmart. They have really good priced picks. They're really stepping up their game this year. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.